right. I hope this works. Shoot, hold on. <clears throat> okay. Ah, shit. All right, this is going to be difficult. It's going to be very difficult. Because the stream quality is really bad for me right now. Give me a second. Uh... How do I do this? For those of you who don't know, I'm streaming from Malaysia right now. So yeah, I did actually wake up recently. Let me see if I can... Uh, uh, so the Wi-Fi is not 100% good, which is why right now uh, streaming is going to be a little bit difficult. Give me a second here. Yeah, I'm in Malaysia. Did I just wake up? Uh, I woke up probably like a couple, a few hours ago. I had to come in, change the stream time, and stuff like that. Um, okay, I think I can do this. I think this is kind of working for me. All right, let's minimize this. Ah, oh, shit. All right. Okay. Okay. Yes. Looks like if I close every other tab I've got, I can stream. Shit. Okay, this is what we got. This is what we got. All right. <clears throat> All right, everybody. So this is uh, this is basically it. This is how it's going to be uh, this stream. This is how it's going to be this Thursday stream. And I think time just based on... So I fly back to the United States on the 26th. Pretty sure the 26th. So I actually might stream a uh, Christmas morning also. So, uh, yeah, might just be a Christmas stream as well. But it will be this quality of stream, basically, for the next, this stream, Thursday stream, and, uh, uh, you know, Monday stream. And Ryanami, thank you for being a Pirate King tier member for 15 months. With this new anime, that's four renditions of East Blue Saga, right? Uh, is it four renditions? Because, I mean, you've got, obviously... The One Piece anime that came, like the original One Piece anime. Then you've got the Netflix One Piece. Then you've got Episode of East Blue, right? Or, or Episode of Arlong, I forget exactly what it's called. And then, yeah, this one. Luffy's starting to look like Bruce seeing his parents die with each new Batman origin story lull. Also, monthly reminder to, to read Fire Punch. Oh, I do have to read Fire Punch. Maybe I can read that while I'm here in Malaysia. Need some, some stuff to, to read, probably. Oscar Cruz, welcome to the Pirate King uh, tier. Appreciate it. Um, end of this month, obviously, another podcast will be coming out, um, uh, Pirate King tier podcast, so you can submit questions for that. Jordan Taylor, thanks for being a Yon Code tier member for 15 months. Crackpot Theory, the One Piece is the Hito Hito no Mi model Ganesha. Mm, I don't think so. For those of you who don't know, Ganesha's story is actually a really interesting one. Um, Ganesha's story is, I, I actually told the whole story of Ganesh one stream. It's a, he's the elephant god, for those of you who don't know. But he wasn't originally an elephant god. He was the <laughs> he was a kid that was that Shiva. It, it's actually such a complicated story. Oh shit! The stream shorted out for me. All right, hold on. 
I don't know if we're going to be able to do this, guys. Keeps cutting out. Um, we might have to do... Yeah, this is this is really tricky. Hold on. I think it stays up for you guys, but for me, it like keeps disappearing intermittently. Give me a second. I don't think the the one piece is a devil fruit though. Alright, hold on. Is there another way I can do this? Okay, if I if I do this, if I do this. Hold on. Let me try and like pop out chat. Maybe I can just pop out chat. I'm like closing everything I possibly can. Closing Microsoft Paint, I'm closing everything on this laptop just to make this work. See if we can do it. Give me a second. Yeah, I don't think the One Piece is a devil fruit. I think the One Piece is something more uh, symbolic. I also think it's related to the geography of the world. Um, the fruit removes obstacles, removing the biggest obstacle, the red line. I don't think Ganesh was even related to removing obstacles, though, necessarily. So I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. Um, Ganesh's story, I don't think it relates to removing obstacles. Um, Wispunk, thanks for the two. I hope Dub uses One Piece Live Action Cast. Um, that would be interesting, because it's like a little bit of a reverse, right? With the One Piece <coughs> current uh, live action using the, the uh, anime's cast. I'm curious, because is I wonder, everything has to be revoiced, right? There's no way, just because of the pacing and everything like that, everything has to be revoiced, right, for this new anime. But the problem is I love the voices too much. I love the voices and the OST too much. So I'm wondering if there's ways that they could incorporate at least maybe the OST into the new anime, or do you think it'll just be like a whole new thing? What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm in the country of Malaysia. <clears throat> uh, Breezy2x, thanks for the five. If Blackbeard lied about finding One Piece or got it first, and Luffy read the, the news while announcing him as Pirate King, how would he react and would it break his will slash ambition? I don't think it would react break his will slash ambition at this point. Um, I think it would heavily drive Luffy to go after Blackbeard or do something. No, maybe not go after Blackbeard because I don't know exactly the type of effect it would have on Luffy. It's one of those things that's like almost... Because Luffy's already kind of experienced that feeling of not being able to achieve his dream at Marine Ford. At Marine Ford, if you look at post Marine Ford, he's like, I can't be the Pirate King. Um, so he's already kind of gone through that. So I don't know if we need to see him experience that again in the story necessarily. But I can't tell how he would react to Blackbeard, you know, about that. It's, it's really hard to say. Uh, African Lays, thanks for the 10. Hello, Mr. Morge. I was watching your stream VODs earlier, and in one of them, you said Cars was trash. Will you ever do an animated movie tier list so we know what you uh, have above it and why? Cars isn't trash. It's just a very, you know, it's like as far as Pixar movies go, it's one of the more, more mediocre ones, right? It's mostly to sell car toys, right? I guess you could say the same about Toy Story, which is why they're doing Toy Story 5. But Toy Story, obviously, I think the, the, I personally think those movies are on a, are on a much higher level than Cars. Um, an animated movie tier list is a great idea, though. I might put that down at some point. I might do that at some point. Nerve AMV Maker, thanks for the five. One Piece Twitter told me that Toei animation was goaded with no flaws. Why are they excited about the new adaptation? How can you top perfection? I was so tempted to tweet something when I saw people getting so excited about it. And I was just like, why? Why do it? I'm on, on vacation, I guess, basically. Why do it? There's, there's no reason to do it. I was also, like, um, getting off of a plane and going to get on the next leg of the plane journey. I was like, do I want to tweet something about this and then get on my plane and then uh, seven hours later uh, land and... This I had to go through a bunch of plane uh, 
individual legs of the journey to get here. So I was like, do I want to like get off and then like look at my phone later and see like everybody talking about more to know the One Piece anime is good because blah, 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 blah. We're just happy about the new one because blah, blah, Like, do I want to do that? No. So I was like, okay, we'll just leave it alone. Everyone can be happy about, uh, about this, right? It's great news. Um, we all know that the One Piece anime, the original One Piece anime, it has its uh, pacing issues, which to most normal people, right, normal people, um, I'm trying not to upset anybody because obviously the One Piece anime has its own group of fans who are uh, an extraordinary bunch, let's just say that. But for most normal people, right, uh, a pacing of half a chapter per episode is just by definition unwatchable. It's not a real series at that point. Um, it's just not, it's not really an adaptation. Um, I'm really happy that we're finally getting something that I could recommend to, to people that I know. Um, the One Piece Netflix is obviously great, right? It's something to get normies into the series. But for people that would want the actual original story of One Piece, right? And at, like the, the actual anime ad adaptation would obviously ideally be best. The problem is the pacing and what the pacing turns into as the story goes further and further on. And then you could recommend the manga, which is what I've taken to doing over the years. But even that, like a lot of people don't want to read. So it's not quite the same thing. This is finally what I think a lot of us have been hoping for. Because, you know, these other series, they're coming out modern day series like Jujutsu Kaisen, Chainsaw Man, Demon Slayer, right? These series that most of us feel aren't as great of stories as One Piece, but they're getting such high quality adaptations with far better pacing, far better watchability, just stuff that can be like a random person can be introduced to and pick up and, um, you know, quickly get into the store, like quickly get into a series, right? Easy to recommend. So it's a shame that One Piece didn't really have something quite like that up till now. Um, I'm just happy that finally it feels like it could get a, a modern update. Isaac St. Charles, thanks a lot. How's Malaysia? Thank God stream still stream time until it's still the same. Yeah, I wasn't sure because I was like, I had no idea how my jet lag would be playing out. So I was like, either, <laughs> I, I think I'm adjusting the jet lag fairly well. So I was awake this morning at 7-ish, 7 a.m.-ish. 7 so um, that's not great. That's not like the middle of the night. It's, it's kind of a reasonable time to be awake. Um, I'm still tired. I didn't get a full night's sleep, so maybe I seem a little tired to you guys. But um, I've only been here one day. Yesterday was my first full day in Malaysia. I got here two nights ago. Um, and it was fun. We went up uh, Penang Hill. I'm visiting my mom. The rest of my family's here as well. Uh, we went up Penang Hill, saw a rainforest habitat, really beautiful views. Um, yeah, definitely happy I came. And the food's been good so far. Also, the exchange rate, the money exchange rate is good, so that's a nice little bonus. <laughs> Snap says, dang, when the hell will you read Kingdom? Thanks for being a yawn coach. You remember for 15 months, man. Uh, Kingdom, I really want to read. I I've said this so many times before. Um, I read the first arc, thought it was a really good first arc. Mild spoilers, there's a, the first arc is a very short arc for people who don't know Kingdom. Then there's a bit of a time skip. Because there was a time skip, and there's not a lot of momentum going from the first arc to the next arc, uh, I took a bit of a break, and I didn't pick King Kingdom back up. I really want to get back into Kingdom, because I feel like it's a series that's right up my alley. But at the same time, um, I'm probably going to read something like Fire Punch first, because Fire Punch is fast. I could probably read Fire Punch in one day. Oscar Cruz, thanks for being a Pirate King tier member for 15 months, man. I have always pushed people towards One Piece. Yeah, One Piece, I think, is... Like, I think it's hard to argue the current One Piece anime over One Piece, because it's the same thing, but just with, you know, the dragged-out bits chopped out. Um, but even One Piece isn't perfect because it's hard for them to work around music cues. The team is amazing, and in my opinion, they've created the best way to enjoy One Piece. I would say, yeah, I would say if you want to watch something, One Piece is probably best. Hopefully this new adaptation is at least as good as that. I don't know how much, I, I want the new adaptation to be good. I think, I think topping, I feel like the, the One Piece anime at the end of the day, it does have a lot of heart. You know, like, it has a lot of heart in terms of the voice cast, the soundtrack, um, and I think definitely the early, the early style. I'm curious, I'm confident that the One Piece anime will be better once, the, the new One Piece anime will be better than the current One Piece anime once we hit time skip. Once we hit the post time skip where um, the pacing just goes down the, down the gutter it will be pretty much impossible for the new One Piece anime to be worse than the previous One Piece anime, right? It's impossible. 
unless they somehow do worse pacing, right? Unless they somehow are like, okay, we can get away with like five pages per, per episode. But I think the whole point is to avoid doing that, right? So it's pretty much guaranteed to be better post time skip, right? No debate there. Um, pre time skip, I'm curious. I'm really curious. I'm like, I don't know how much pre time skip One Piece anime needs a, a tune up. Uh, I feel like they could make it um, maybe visually better. They could probably like pacing, etc. But a lot of the scene direction was really good. Um, voice cast obviously is going to be almost impossible to top, in my opinion. Soundtrack. I'm I'm really curious. I think let's see, let's see. I, I if they put a lot of effort into it, right? If it's like a seasonal anime or something like that, which I imagine it, it would be, um, I think that this could could be basically everything that we've been hoping for. Steven, so the thing is, I was hoping for something like this for the longest time, but I always imagined it would happen after the current One Piece anime finished. I never thought we'd see it, you know, anytime before the next 10 years. Because I just didn't know that's a thing, that you could have two running adaptations of the same anime out at the same time, you know, um, that are both staying com like faithful to the story. Like, one's not just a, um, I don't know, like, I know, like, some anime, they kind of, do their own take on the story or something like that, like the first version of Full Metal Alchemist or whatever, but this is the first time we're seeing something like this as far as I know. Steven Guy, thanks to the five, Smoker and Fujitora both went to Vegapunk around the same time. Since they both have similar forms of justice, then maybe Fuji will train Smoker up a bit. I would like to think so, and I think they both have a, like Smoker was reading that newspaper and he was talking about like how much he admired Fujitora and what Fujitora did in Dressrosa. Smoker played a similar role in Alabasta to what Fujitora played in Dressrosa, so the parallels there are significant. I just don't know if, uh, I want to believe that Smoker still has an important role to play, but I, he's not going to be a rival to Luffy ever again. Luffy's just way too out of his league. There is, the only Marine in the world that is a rival to Luffy at this point is, like a, a challenge to Luffy at this point is a Kainu. So <laughs> I think Smoker's role has to be something else, and I, it's possible he doesn't need to be that strong to accomplish whatever this role is. Saus, thanks for being a Pirate King tier member for four months. Normal people is kind of crazy. I'm just, I'm trying not to be insulting. Like, I understand that there's a sect of people, I can't personally understand them, but they exist, who, who love the One Piece uh, anime as is, who, for them personally, they can't tell the difference between, you know, like a, a normally paced episode of a show versus something that is uh, <laughs> um, basically zero actual content stretched over 20 minutes. It's just, I don't know. Uh, there's different, there's all sorts of people. Um, some people just don't mind. Some people just don't mind. Um, uh, I think there's obviously a difference between the average person and what they would see if you showed them an episode of the One Piece anime versus what the One Piece anime fans seem to believe it is. But uh, it is what it is. So, you know, no hate. Obviously, whoever's enjoying the One Piece anime can enjoy the One Piece anime. Um, but I think I and many others are happy that there's something that's watchable for the rest of us, the rest of the world, basically. John Ross, thanks for the five. Based on the preview image, I think it's going to be that faded, hand-colored art style like the color walks and volume covers, like the Grimgar anime. I don't know what the Grimgar anime is. If my computer wasn't, like, struggling to survive on, like, a tiny little sliver of Wi-Fi right now, I would look it up. But, um, yeah, I'd welcome a... As long as it's got, like, a... I, I hope that they're able to stick with the sort of consistent art style because that is something that's a bit jarring to me, how the One Piece anime's art style changed so much over the years. Um, I hope they're able to stick with something kind of consistent and like a singular identity that we can kind of experience the One Piece world in. Um, obviously things will change over time, like in the One Piece manga itself, the art style changes over time, but I'd say that the changes in the anime over time, the art style of the anime over time, that artistic style change is much more significant and dramatic over the course of the series than what you see in the manga. The manga is more like Oda's evolution as an author a little bit. The One Piece anime kind of, um, over the years, has switched up just general, uh, the general aesthetic, um, uh, like stylistically and very deliberately, I think a lot more. Reflexi, thanks for being a member for 10 months. Only anime to ever have two simultaneous animes. I, I think so. Like, I don't know enough about uh, other animes to say for sure. But as far as I know, I think that is the case, right? If somebody else can confirm. Blue, thanks for being a Pirate King tier member for 14 months, man. Read Kingdom and Kingdom and watch Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Oh, I have to pick Legend of the Galactic Heroes back up. That series was turning out to be really good. I just don't remember all the details now. Because it's, uh, it's a more dialogue-heavy show with a lot of little politics and stuff like that. So 
there's like names of families and shit that you have to remember. I might have to rewatch from the beginning, which is going to be a pain in the ass. I don't want to do that. If there's a way I could get recaps of it, that'd be good. Uh, maybe there's like a site I can Wikipedia the first, uh, read the wiki of the first several episodes again so I can remember. Ray Ochiha, always good to see you. Thanks for being a member, a Yonko tier member for 14 months. Hey, major hype for the new anime. Also, have you seen the Bleach Core 3 trailer? No, I didn't know that's come out already. I'm excited. As, I'm super excited for that as well. And when can we expect Naruto Kai Super? <laughs> I feel like, um, kind of like the way that the One Piece Netflix adaptation was a, um, a way to open the door for other animes to get their live action adaptation greenlit. I feel like if the One Piece anime is successful here, then we will see something similar where, you know, Naruto might get a reboot. Bleach, I don't think, needs one. I mean, thousand, maybe it gets one with the first part of it being done in Thousand Year Blood War quality. I, I doubt that would happen, though. Um, but yeah, maybe we see something like that. Oh, let's get the stream likes up. I don't even know what the stream likes are at right now because I've, I've only got chat open so i have no idea what stream likes are at or anything like that right now i genuinely don't know but let's get stream likes up let's get it up to the next i'm gonna guess it's at like let's get it up to 200 i don't know where it's at right now i'm gonna guess 200 i feel like 200 is probably a good idea wit is a great studio one of the best at storyboarding says raijin can somebody tell me another thing that they've done so i can check it out um again i've had no time like between plane rides and jet lag and yesterday I was out all day, I've had no time to really look into the One Piece anime stuff. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm really excited that it, it's going to exist, but I, I have no context of how good the studio is. Um, I didn't look details into when it's going to be released or anything like that, if those details even exist. So, um, actually, the more information you guys can give me, the better. I'm learning here right now. Goomba Boomba, thanks for being a Yonko tier member for 14 months. Maybe they could keep the OG voice recordings and the music because Toei is involved as well. You can give them access to OG content. Can't imagine different VAs. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at, which is just like, the things that they can improve are the pacing, the animation, um, probably seen direction to a degree, but the music and the voice acting, like the voice acting is really the soul of the whole thing, right? So the tricky thing is that if they keep the voice recordings, that's going to keep the pacing stuck at a certain rate right? Because you can tell down the line, like, voice actors are even told to slow down their lines and give long pauses to, to draw out a certain scene. So I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. Um, Umer Ula, thanks for the five. Do you think this... No, we covered this. Um, or did we? This is just similar to the previous question. It's just similar, but I'll read it. Do you think this will cause more remakes of other manga slash anime to be, to be made? Do you think this project can be canceled if it intervenes with Toei's anime? I have no idea the legalities of things or if the project can be canceled. Goomba Boomba seemed to imply that um, Toei is involved, so I doubt that it would be an issue. But um, <clears throat> if, um, if it causes more anime and manga to be made, um, again, I think depending on the success, I think it's entirely a possibility. Because um, like same way One Piece live action paved the way for that, I, so I think that rebooting Naruto. I mean, obviously anime get rebooted all the time, right? But um, I don't know. Like, okay, One Piece is a new... Okay, I don't think it's going to lead to more remakes because more remakes are already happening, right? Rurouni Kenshin, Yu Yu Hakusho remake coming out. That stuff already exists. What's unique about this, right? So I don't think it's actually going to pave the way about in that now the more I think about it. What's unique about this is that One Piece is already... It's still going. It's still going and, and it's getting a remake. Um... But that's just because it's so ridiculously long. So there's not a clear comparison. Maybe Hajime no Epo, I don't even know if that anime is still going, if it's caught up, what it's, what's the deal with that or whatever. I just know it's a long series as well. But there's nothing really similar I can think of, of a series that's going so long that it would get a remake while it's currently in production. Um... <clears throat> Uh, dick so small, piss on my balls. Uh, thanks for the five. As punishment for for spreading the glyphs, Emo had the Ope Ope user that made him immortal put Lily's soul inside the... Oh, interesting! Oh, that is a very interesting idea. Emo had the Ope Ope user that made him immortal put Lily's soul inside the elephant now known as Zunisha. That is a great theory. That is a great theory for such a... for someone with such a dumb name. 
What do you guys think about that? That's a really interesting theory. And that means that the elephant, oh man, the elephant soul is just in, the elephant soul just got swapped into like <laughs> a queen's body. With that, I guess that's funny in its own way. Um, well, she was made to disappear, so I guess she, <laughs> the elephant just got swapped into her body and then killed, which is, um, that's kind of sad for the elephant, the original elephant, but that is a really interesting idea. I like that idea. Hamza Tariq, thanks for the two. Do, you, do I still think Smoker will be part of the crew? Um, okay, so if Bonnie joins, then I'm, I'm of two, two opinions right now. I'm like, if either we're, we're done getting new Straw Hats, or Bonnie joining opens the door to potentially more Straw Hats being added. So let's, let's see how the Bonnie situation plays out first, and then, then go from there. And just one second. It's kind of hurting my neck. I might sit on the floor, actually. Let me see if this is like a little bit better for me. <sighs> yeah, this is probably good enough. I guess your background doesn't really change much, except you see this chair. Um, <clears throat> Kai came out a decade after Z. Yeah, okay, there was a bit of a break, right? And at the same time, like, Kai is not... It's... Kai is a... Um, well, it... What WIT is doing is like a whole new anime, right? Kai is more just a, a one pace version of what already exists. As far as I understand, what WIT is doing is a whole new anime. Um, Hamza Tariq, no, we covered this. Uh, Dixo Small says, thanks for the five. T-Bone is posing as a corpse for Marine Mission infiltrating Cross Guild. Oh, that's a cool idea. T-Bone versus Buggy, Fujitora versus Mihawk, Smoker versus Croc incoming. Smoker versus Croc. That was the fight that people thought was going to happen in Alabasta, and we kind of, we just never actually got that. Um, it was it was teased in certain ways, I felt, but it never happened. Uh, it would be cool to see it happen now, but Smoker needs some some upgrades if he's going to keep up with post time skip Crocodile. That's a really cool idea, though. T-Bone versus Buggy. T-Bone would destroy Buggy. I, actually, Buggy might be able to avoid him because of the fruit. Might be a good... Uh, <laughs> might be the only way to avoid <laughs> might be his only good matchup that he could possibly have like a swordsman the outback panda is always good to see you man thanks for the 20 i pray we get new voice actors i know everyone loves the current cast but they're too old to be starting from scratch oh i don't want them to start from scratch i was saying like i wonder if there's a way that they could take the voice recordings that exist and use them in the um new anime but it that's a long shot yeah kai wasn't new animation right Okay, can somebody tell me um, what's going on with uh, WIT? What, what else, like, uh, are they, they're a good studio, right? They're a good studio. What else did they do? Oh, they did the first three seasons of Attack on Titan and they did Vinland Saga? Are you kidding? That's, I have to look it up on my phone just because I, I don't want to <laughs> push the internet here too hard. That's actually, that's ideal. Holy shit, I can't imagine them doing Vinland Saga animators doing One Piece. That feels right up their alley. That is cool. That is cool to think about. Uh, so they made... They're making a Spy Family movie, Pokemon. Okay, I'm looking at films produced. How do I see anime? Breezy2x, thanks for the five. Since the two long complaints will be going away thanks to pacing, will One Piece reach Naruto and DBZ levels in the West? Here's my thought. Um, I think that... So, remember when the One Piece Netflix came out, and I was like, okay, everyone knows who, what One Piece is now? Recently, I've, uh, I've for whatever reason, uh, I've come across a little bit more often now, again, the, oh, One Piece, what's that? Or, I haven't heard of One Piece thing. So, I don't know, I guess some people, they didn't even see it on Netflix, or, like, didn't even see it on Netflix's home screen, or it didn't register or something. So, um, there's still some level of lack of cultural awareness, I think. Um, but, I imagine there's plenty more normie fans who have been brought into the series already compared to naruto um at this point in uh at least in the united states i can't speak for other countries now the new anime i could definitely see that helping spread it because you know if you get one piece and then you combine it with like demon slayer or jujutsu kaisen level animation production pacing e like with the story that one piece has i i think the potential for it to to blow up is way bigger than those two um, so I don't know. I, I think with one piece, it's going to be like a bit of a, like this leads to this leads to the, like a sort of snowball that gains momentum over time. Um, 
I think that the potential is there down the line for it to be bigger than Naruto and Dragon Ball. Um, is it already bigger than Naruto? Some people might already say yes, based on your perception of the One Piece uh, Netflix. I personally, I would need to do some surveys or polls or like talk to people to really be able to tell. Um, I think at least the 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 15 minutes of fame that the One Piece Netflix anime or net, net, Netflix live action kind of netted it um, was probably bigger than anything that Naruto or Dragon Ball had for a window of time, I think, for sure. So whether that effect remains, how it continues, whatever, I think this new anime will definitely add to that. Obviously, season two of the live action, for sure. Brandon Kane, thanks for the two. Yeah, did the first, WIT did the first three Attack on Titan seasons, Vinland and Spy by Family. And those are all Spy, Spy X Family, whatever you say. Um, those are all super successful shows, and I think really, really well done. Uh, Spy Family, I've only seen the first episodes, I don't really know. Um, but it seemed good to me. And, uh, yeah, I think just the Vinland Saga, like, Vinland Saga is obviously very different from One Piece, but I associated a little bit with it because of sea and Vikings, pirate similarities and stuff like that. Oda obviously very inspired by Vicky the Viking, so, you know, similarities there. Um, yeah, I, I think that there's, like, almost no way that it can go wrong, now that I know that that's the studio that's doing it. Malik, thanks for the five. What WIT is great. The only studio that could be better is MAPPA. One Piece fans stay eating. Aren't we uh, supposed to be upset with MAPPA these days? Like, aren't we mad about some stuff? I don't know. Um, I'm excited. By the time I get back home, I get back home on, I think, the 27th? 27th or 28th? I think once I get back home, the entire season of Jujutsu Kaisen will be um, finished being animated. So I'm going to get to wa binge watch the entire thing. Uh, I watched the... Uh, the first five episodes already, because that was the Gojo flashback arc, and then the Shibuya incident, I'm going to get to binge all that once I get home, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Muhammad Issei, thanks for the two. They should use new voice actors for this project. <sighs> yeah, I think, I think they'll have to. That'll be weird. They also did Ranking of Kings. Ranking of Kings was really good. I never finished it, but the style was awesome. I like that. It's a, that's a very colorful show. I could feel like... Um, and that's a wide variety of aesthetics between Attack on Titan, um, Vinland Saga, Ranking of Kings, I think that's, and, and Spy Family even, I think that's a wide variety of aesthetics and they all look good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I know people have problems with MAPPA now, but everyone's really liking Jujutsu Kaisen as far as I know at the moment, right? I know it's had a few dead spots from what I've understood, uh, from Twitter, but at the same time, people have also really been gassing up what they've done with the season, so, I don't know. Um, Anuj Agarwal, good to see you, man. Thanks for being a Yon Cotier member for 15 months. WIT Studios is under production IG, also the parent company from, uh, from MAPPA. Oh, interesting. Why? That's why Attack on Titan switched over. Interesting. They did GP, so relationship with Netflix too. GP. Um, don't know what that is. But, okay, good stuff to know. MAPPA ain't that good overall. What has MAPPA done that's bad? Let me take a look. I feel like MAPPA has generally been good, but people have gotten sour on it. I think people didn't like some of what they did with Attack on Titan Season 4, which I still haven't. I've only watched a couple episodes of that. Um, like, what did they really screw up? Did they screw up One Punch Man Season 2? Was that what they did? I kind of remember that. Unless I'm mix mixing it up with something. Yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen is well animated, right? Um... What did they screw up? I don't think they really screwed up anything, right? Um, wait, did they did Vinland Saga? Which season of Vinland Saga did they do? Someone give me a rundown real quick of... I thought you guys just told me that WIT did Vinland Saga. I'm so confused. Um... Muhammad Issa, it's also been picked up by both Netflix and Prime. Oh, already? This WIT thing? That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, I can't pronounce this person's name because it's Japanese, but you've been a Yonko tier member for six months. Always good to see you. Hi, Warge. I lo loved GZ1 and laughed at the... Oh, Godzilla minus one and laughed at the last five minutes. Kind of saw it coming and I can see how much you would have molded at the revelation. Thank you for recommending. Yeah, I don't want to spoil anything, but if you subtract the last tiny bit... Like the literally the last, last, literally the last scene, not the last five minutes even, just the last scene, just the last scene. 
Oh man, I would I would have uh, it would have been actually a perfect movie in my mind, pretty much like a perfect uh, action blockbuster. It's still one of my favorite movies now that I've let it settle. Because sometimes, um, see you see a thing and then you really, you're really loving it, and one thing kind of fucks it up for you, and then right after you're like, oh my god, I wish they hadn't done that. But then you let it sit and you're like, okay, it wasn't a huge deal in the long term of things. And then overall, my pot, my experience with the movie was still really, really great overall. So I'm like, you know what, end of the day, it's still a really great movie. Uh, still, I think it's settling as uh, right behind Lord of the Rings as uh, probably like my second favorite action type blockbuster movie ever. Um, point D extra, thanks for the two. This streams like looks like a hostage video. Okay, for those who don't know, I'm in um, uh, Malaysia at the moment. That's why the stream quality is all like this. Okay, let's see. So Mappa did, <laughs> oh, Hell's Paradise. Yeah, I tried to get into that because the concept seems so interesting, but I didn't think that was that good. Um, okay, Chainsaw Man. Oh, okay, Chainsaw Man. Yeah, Chainsaw Man, I, I did not think that they did the best. I think they missed the idea of Chainsaw Man. But at the same time, the more I thought about it, I was like, it's hard to, it's fucking hard to adapt Chainsaw Man. It's fucking hard to adapt. Like, I went back into skimming chapters. The style of Chainsaw Man is very, very difficult to translate from page to animation. Because just the tone that you need to set is so difficult to describe. Um, it works better because the series itself is, it feels a little absurd, a little surreal, um, a little abstract in moments. It's very hard to communicate um, that in, in anime. I, like, the specific Chainsaw Man style tone. I'm not saying the general concept of surrealism or whatever. Chainsaw Man's not surreal. That's that's the wrong word for it. But um, it's... it's uh, Actually, let me take a look. How would I describe this? Because um, I feel like you could say, unless I'm using this incorrectly... Um, is this what... I'm trying to look up uh, look at examples of like postmodernism, but I don't think it's postmodernism. It, it's it's not. I'm using that incorrectly. I got excited because I was like, could I apply that to Chainsaw Man? It's like I know what I kind of know what it is, um, but it's not that. But anyway, um, Chainsaw Man is, <laughs> um, yeah, Chainsaw Man. I think the style is just really hard to translate. So they they took a shot at it and they committed really hard to a style. And I think it's one of those things where if you are a manga fan, then you feel like it's probably off. If you're just coming at it new as an anime, then you probably get a little bit the wrong idea about Chainsaw Man, but you probably still find it enjoyable. So I don't think they, they massacred it. Yeah, people shit on MAPPA because they uh, abuse their workers, but I'm saying like the quality of the anime, that should be, as far as I know, that's good, right? They did Vinland Season 1. Okay, cool, cool. I thought Vinland Season 1 was good. Um... Did they do season one or season two? Oh, WIT did season one. Oh, MAPPA did season two. Ah, okay. I haven't seen Vinland Saga season two. I've read it, obviously, but uh, I'm probably not going to watch it. Okay, MAPPA did season two. But people liked uh, season Vinland Saga season two, probably because the story is so good, so maybe not because of MAPPA. Um, yeah. Yeah, Eric is uh, giving some some insight here. Chainsaw Man plays with time a lot, very hard to get right. Yeah, the way that uh, paneling is done, the way that the pacing of scenes is done and paneling is done in Chainsaw Man, like just over the course of certain chapters, um, it fucks with, it's got like a very staccato sort of tempo where suddenly it's like beat, 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 or then a jump or something like that, or it skips some action. Like, it's hard to explain. It's very uh, stilted movement, I think, through the panels, which is interesting and gives a really interesting feel, but I feel like that's hard to communicate through um, through, uh, through animation or, or hitting something consistent in animation. By the way, Eric, I'm in Malaysia, so I think I'm close to your time zone right now. Oh, no, Jagrawal, thanks for the five. I wonder how long this has been in pre-production, seeing as WIT keeps on giving their biggest projects to MAPPA. Interesting. GP equals Great Pretender. So Vinland Saga and AOT. Oh, so you think that maybe they've been doing that to, to open up space for their One Piece production. Interesting, interesting. That's cool. That's cool to think about. Um, GP equals Great Pretender. Yeah, I don't watch that, so I don't even know. 
Am I Malaysian? No, but my mom has a, a, a job that put her in Malaysia. So visiting basically with family right now. Bunfagum, thanks for the seven. Mork, WIT has been falling apart for years. They have A-class talent, but have been struggling with budgeting and scheduling. Hopefully they have time. Maybe they've been struggling in, with budgeting and scheduling because they've been working on the One Piece anime. I don't know. Maybe that's why. Yeah, family in Malaysia right now. Tom Tom says postmodernism is a lot weirder element. Yeah, I knew I was I knew I was using it wrong because so one of my favorite movies is like Snecticky New York, which is considered to be like a postmodern uh postmodern uh film, right? And I was like, Chainsaw Man's not that at all. Um <laughs> But in my in my head and moment, I was like, but maybe postmodernism can be used a little bit more broadly. Uh I know Kafka is also considered uh postmodernism. Um well, maybe I'm mixing things up now. No, I, I'm pretty sure Kafka is also considered postmodernism. Um, and like The Trial is one of my favorite books. So I know it's not, Chainsaw Man doesn't fall under that category, but I'm like, I feel like depending on how broadly you, like the term is, or the, the, the style is used, it could kind of fall under that, but it's really not. Um, <clears throat> Tom Tom, thanks for being a member, a Yonko tier member for 15 months. If Usopp dies, sacrifice himself. Do you rather he do it fearlessly or be crying slash afraid but do it anyway slash brave? I personally want the former, love the bits. I think um, one of those things where it's like very fearless but also maybe with like some, uh, some, like some, I think there's no shame if there were some tears coming out or something like that in this, uh, in the process. Um, like I think Usopp's had some brave moments where he's like making a big stand but his eyes are watered up. I think it works both ways. Um, and thank you for the, yeah, thanks for, the video support, obviously. Kafka was absurdist? Maybe I'm just mixing up terms at this point. Uh, let's take a look. I wish I could just use the phone. Uh, it depends on the definition. Tired of people. Oda's not going to kill Usopp. <laughs> Tom Tom says, I took AP art history, so you got to ask me. Can you give a, a tight definition of postmodernism? Yeah, it, like uh, immersion is saying, WIT most likely won't have any budget issues for One Piece at least. Yeah, like the, if you're adapting One Piece, like there's two ways you can do it. Either if you're like Toei and you're just trying to squeeze One Piece for all it's worth, that's one thing. But if you're doing a remake at the same time, then it needs to be something that like this seems like a legit attempt at because um, the only reason to make a, a remake of an ongoing anime at the same time is basically if you're trying to you're trying to beat it out in quality, right? You're trying to beat it out in quality. Um, because otherwise you, you wouldn't just make another one just for the sake of making another one. There's no point. So if they're aiming for quality with the new one, that means that they must be setting aside a lot of budget to adapt one piece properly. Right. <clears throat> Eric says temporarily abstract is the word you're looking for. That's not really a style though. I mean, abstract is a, like, abstract applies to a million different um, uh, styles of art and writing, basically. There's specific categories that we try and put them under beyond that, right? Like surrealism. Good says more, did you end up watching Killers of the Flower Moon? No, but my family did, and they didn't think it was good, so I'm probably not going to try it. I... We have different tastes in some areas, but um, the way they describe certain things to me, I was like, okay, I think I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'd like that. <clears throat> okay, that's a better definition. Eric says, postmodern is self-referential, ironic art. 
Does Goodbye Eri fall under that category? Julian D says, thoughts on Chainsaw Man movie? Oh, yeah. Okay, the Chainsaw Man movie, I'm going to say this, and I think that people might disagree because I know that people really like the upcoming arc. Uh, upcoming arc. But here's the thing. Um, I don't think... I, I like the upcoming arc as well, the one that's going to be adapted into the movie. I don't think that it lends itself well to a movie, okay? Um, I just don't. I don't think Chainsaw Man is in a spot where it needs a movie. I think it just needs a really tightly adapted. I think one of Chainsaw Man's great, here's, here's the thing. I think one of Chainsaw Man's greatest strengths is its pacing, okay? Um, I think that the pacing was a bit too slow in season one. And I especially think if they're gonna try and take this, this upcoming arc, this movie, if they're going to try and take that and, like, expand it into a full film, I just don't think it's something that, that makes sense as a full film whatsoever. Um, I think that you don't want to go too slow with, uh, with Chainsaw Man. And I, I can kind of already imagine how they're going to drag out the earlier parts. Um, and I think that the climax isn't quite grand enough to warrant it being the climax of a feature film. I think it's a great little arc. I think it's an interesting arc. Part of it is also that Chainsaw Man arcs are fast. There's no long Chainsaw Man arcs. They're all like 15 chapters max, maybe like 20 chapters max. And they're Chainsaw Man chapters, which are really, really short chapters. So by most other series standards, like their arcs are like 10 chapters max, practically. Um, yeah, like 10, 15 chapter chapter worth of material for most normal normal series. So, um, yeah, I just don't know. Um, it's hard for Chainsaw Man. Like, well, you also don't want to adapt a really long arc into a movie, but I, I think it's especially, especially with this, I just don't think it's, like, enough material to really cover a movie unless they really try to drag it out. And I just don't think it's a grand enough event to really warrant being a film. Like, if I compare to the Jujutsu Kaisen movie that just came out, like, it culminates in a fairly large-scale epic battle, you know? Um, I think that, like, when you're doing a, 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 like a full anime film, I think you just need certain, certain level of set pieces and certain level of, like, significant plot moments. Not plot moments, but, like, significant level of stakes at certain points to, to warrant it being that, being a film. And I don't, I just don't think that this this one has it. I feel like this is a very tight, personal, um, like, almost, like, almost singular character relationship focused um, uh, film is what it's going to be. And I think people that are most shonen fans who are going to try this for the first time are not going to find it quite as exciting, right? Even if they're, even though the writing's good, I don't think they're going to find it quite as exciting as like the Demon Slayer Mugen Train movie or the recent Jujutsu Kaisen movie. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, honestly, if I was adapting one arc from part one of Chainsaw Man to be a movie, it would be the arc right after this one. Um, I'm just going to spoil the name. I think spoiling the name's not a big deal, but International Assassin's Arc, I think that can make for a great film because the buildup is good, the uh, stakes and the way the stakes come together are good, Provides some amazing set pieces, some crazy, crazy plot twists and everything like that. Um, where, very well written. Um, yeah, just a very, very dramatic snowball of events. And it's short. It would definitely fit into the length of a movie. Um, I think that's the one I would adapt into a film. But the problem is then, you know, you can't really do a full season of Chainsaw Man after that because then it's too close to part one ending. So I don't know. Dirk, thanks for the 20. Morge, heard of Homestuck? It opened my eyes as a kid to how grand a narrative can be and how deep slash interesting a story's characters can get. Its presentation is also very unique for a webcomic with animation slash music, music on certain pages. I've heard of that one. I've heard of that one. That's the second uh, um, webcomic that I've had people suggest. Also, Kubera. Um, and Kubera I started as well, and I thought that was good. So I'm kind of realizing that webcomics can be really good as well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to note down Homestuck. Let me note down Homestuck. This is uh, not the first time I've heard it being brought up. Breezy2x, thanks for the five. Which Straw Hats, including Luffy, has the single best character moment in the series? Ooh. 
I think just like one of the best character moments, most iconic character moments in One Piece is, is help me, not help me. Um, I want to live, mix those two up. Um, just because of like, the, it's the culmination of Robin's entire character arc, which I think is still to date, probably the best written character arc in One Piece. Um, you know, a woman who had been like driven to suicide essentially, um, due to the trauma of her past and then basically finding her way back to the light thanks to these main characters. I think that One Piece pulled that off phenomenally well. So I still think that's the best character writing in One Piece. I still think that's the culmination of it. Um, Tom Tom, thanks for the five. You discussed if LeBron could have saved Ace <laughs> if LeBron could have saved Ace and Ring Forward, but could the LeBron led Miami Heat have defeated Big Mom and Kaido on the rooftop? Um yeah, guaranteed. If LeBron's there, no question. LeBron's there, no question. <laughs> um, I think... <laughs> what's the equivalent of taking on Kaido and Big Mom? What's the equivalent of that? I feel like there's no real equivalent. Um, I've always equated LeBron at... Uh, LeBron versus the Warriors. Uh, LeBron, LeBron versus the, the KD Warriors as being like LeBron at... Like, Whitebeard at Marine Ford. Oh, I've seen some controversy about Homestuck now. I don't know. Oh, people are just talking about the Quan Chi scene? <laughs> Look, that's not the most important part of this uh, movie. Movie slash anime, uh, whatever. But do people agree? I, I feel like I, I don't... I think everyone's excited to just see Chainsaw Man being back and being animated. But my worry is that this is not going to deliver on the same types of things that people got out of, like, these recent anime movies. Like, um like the Mugen Train movie or the Jujutsu Kaisen movie, I'm worried that it's not going to be exciting in the same way that those were. Um, and that that's, it could potentially lead to Chainsaw Man not getting a second season of its anime. You know what I mean? Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm Maybe I'm underestimating it, but I just remember that arc and that arc is... It's just a very, very, like, character-focused storyline. It focuses on the character dynamic of two particular characters. For most of it, it is not an action-heavy um, storyline whatsoever, especially till, really, to, towards the, the climax of it. And even then, the climax, I don't think, is all that crazy. Um, I just don't think... Like, if I'm thinking of all of the Chainsaw Man arcs throughout um, now till the end of Part 1... That's the one that's least movie-like to me. Kalaha says, not gonna lie, Chainsaw Man was the most immersive manga for me. I don't need an anime. So there's certain manga that I think use the medium of manga really, really, really well. Like, there's something that they're doing with the medium specifically to, to tell the story in, in a way that can't be communicated quite the same way as it would be in uh, in any other format, right? I think Berserk is one. I think Chainsaw Man is another, which is funny because Chainsaw Man's artwork is nowhere close to as good as Berserk. But the way that scene direction is used in Chainsaw Man and the way that paneling is used in Chainsaw Man is very, very creative and very specific to that medium to give it a sort of tone, uh, tone, feel, flow, uh, atmosphere that can only really come through in the the manga version of it. Like, I even try. I found Chainsaw Man in color. I found a colored version of it. And I don't think it works as well, not in black and white, even just reading it in color. And I almost always pre prefer, uh, <laughs> sorry, prefer reading in color. Um, like, most most manga, like One Piece, Jujutsu Kaisen, etc., they're going to benefit from being animated. Um, because there's nothing that they're really doing with the medium of manga itself that says that the story... Only that the story and the style only works with this medium. It's generally going to benefit from being animated. Chainsaw Man, Berserk, you lose something. I feel once you try and translate it from from page to screen. Personally, Eric Chalados, yeah, I would agree. I would agree with that. Chainsaw Man's best asset is pace. Very strange. Very weird. I wouldn't say it's its best asset, but in terms of how it directs its its individual scenes, the way what it does with paneling, the sort of the quiet beats that it uses. Um, it's a big part of what makes Chainsaw Man Chainsaw Man. <clears throat> Matt 
Malice, the M says Chainsaw Man art style almost looks Western. Yeah, Chainsaw Man's very, very Western influenced. I think it doesn't feel Japanese at all in terms of its writing style um, either. And that's another thing that makes it a little hard to translate to like epic movies because usually in like an anime movie, what you get is long sort of long sort of long dragged out back and forths between characters who do a lot of talking in their fights and sort of um, I don't know. Like, they go through flashbacks or, like, (laughs) recall past oaths or promises or their dreams or something like that. Uh, Chainsaw Man's done in a much more Western format where, like, yeah, there'll be, like, some talking and shit talking over the course of a fight. But, like, the fight's going to play out at a relatively fast pace. And, like, it's going to be mainly action into action into action. It's not going to be, like, a whole bunch of, um, you know, (laughs) sob stories or, like, talk about like yelling like long dialogues or monologues about your philosophies and stuff like that. So I don't know. Tala wants a Eric Tala wants a stream with you. He actually knows what he's talking about. Unlike most of us with art. I feel like, uh, Eric, we could do a stream maybe sometime down the line. And if you guys don't know, he's part of the red force podcast. I don't know if you guys still do your podcast. I'm sorry. I haven't checked in a bit. Um, but he'll probably talk about more stuff on that podcast. If I ever did a stream with Eric, it would be something anime-related or something like that. Eric says, it's the only interesting part, in my opinion. Otherwise, it's just a generic manga. Uh, the plot is its most is the most original. No, see, that's, that's where we got to disagree, where uh, Chainsaw Man is um, probably the most... Um, the, the writing of Chainsaw Man is, like, several steps above pretty much every other shonen. It's the only... Uh, it's literally the only shonen running right now that one actually takes on complex ideas and philosophies. And two, it's the only one that I thought about this is it's an interesting thing. Um, Chainsaw Man's the only shown and running right now. And really the only action manga I've ever read that exclusively uses uh, literary devices to communicate its ideas because its ideas are on the one hand, more complex than most other um, action based manga that you're going to get. And two, it's the only one that exclusively uses literary devices. You, you're never going to have in Chainsaw Man, you know, the, the the thing of, like, characters just cringely yelling about all the themes and, like, spelling out all the messaging for you and the main character just giving a monologue, breaking it all down, or the villain doing that or something. It's the only one that exclusively uses building metaphors and symbolism uh, and imagery throughout the entirety of the series to explain everything. I think Chainsaw Man Part 2 is straying away from that, though, which is why I don't like that series. Like, I, d- I don't think the part is quite as good, in my opinion. Um, but Chainsaw Man's writing is on a significantly like it's on a totally different level in terms of actually approaching it like like I suppose legitimate um literary writers would write basically if that makes sense it's just easy to miss that because the the premise is so deliberately ridiculous and the main character is done in such a ridiculous manner Uh, oofs is pretentious no that's just that's what actual writing is like, that's what you will see in uh, most every book that chooses the subtle route rather than the broken down. Like, here, what a, here's the messaging spelled out for you for, for the character. <clears throat> Eric says, S, sorta? It's pretty on the nose? No, it's the total opposite. It's the least on the nose manga that you're going to get. It's, uh, like, what are you talking about? It, it only uses literary devices. It, it, it's the total opposite. You never have characters just spelling out the themes of Chainsaw Man. It doesn't happen. Diego Tejada says, what about Hunter x Hunter? I said currently running. Hunter x Hunter, I think especially, like when you get to the Chimera Antarctic in particular, I think uh, it's a cut above Chainsaw Man for sure. Oof says, I say pretentious because you haven't read every Shonen ever made and I doubt only Chainsaw Man uses literary devices. I said it's the only one that exclusively uses literary devices. Every shonen uses literary devices, but it's the only one that I've ever read. And I'm not even counting, like, you got to understand, I'm counting every action manga, action adventure fantasy manga that I've read. Everything from Vinland Saga, Berserk, um, etc. will at some point have characters break down what the themes are and the messaging. And that's fine. You get that in many works, but it is generally considered to be fairly impressive when you're able to get it across using exclusively literary devices, which Chainsaw Man does. I'm not saying Chainsaw Man is better written than Berserk. I'm just pointing out one facet of its writing, which is unique to it as far as I've seen. (coughs) 
Eric says, yeah, but it's not sublet in metaphor for manga. Yes, it's one of the... Uh, you cut out here. It's not crazy deep. Um, as far as manga that I've read, I think the themes of Chainsaw Man are significantly more... Um, like, I don't know how much deeper you want, but the entire manga, at least part one, is tackling the hedonic treadmill. And it tackles it in a very interesting and unique way um, with its approach to it being something that I haven't seen in any other series. So if you know something else that does that, please let me know. But uh, I think it has a genuinely, genuinely unique take on like a very old and deeply embedded philosophical idea. Um, and one that's, uh, I think, definitely more complex than what you see out of pretty much any other shonen save Hunter x Hunter, pretty much. Atala says, Eric is shitting in Chainsaw Man. I regret asking for the collab. Well, Eric comes in with knowledge on certain things. He's knowledgeable about certain things, for sure. For sure. Like, more than the rest of us. So, gotta give credit where that's due. Yeah. Like Oof says, most manga themes are about friendship and hope. So, yeah, not hard for Chainsaw Man to be more complex. Well, yeah, that's the point. <sighs> I mean, Eric, what's, what's more, <laughs> what, what, like, what's, uh, no, it's not on the nose about it whatsoever, because it never specifically breaks down what he's saying about the hedonic tr uh, treadmill. It's exclusively through, de like, Denji never has a sort of aha moment where he breaks down, like, oh, I felt this way at the beginning, and now this, and now this, and now this. It's exclusively us realizing his feelings at one point, connecting to his feelings at another point, connecting to certain small little realizations, but it's never on the nose, like, you objectively can't use the criticism on the nose about it when it never spells out any of what it's saying to us. You have to just be keeping track of the metaphors. Uh, like, that's just an incorrect criticism. Because if you're saying that's on the nose, then, like, pretty much every other movie, TV series, manga, etc., like, 99% of it all that you ever read is basically, like, <laughs> I don't even know, like... It's so far beyond on the nose, it's like punching someone's nose in the face or something like that. Um, Jane Salmon's about as subtle with it as you can get. Uh, Hosue Olat22, thanks for the five. Did you, did you ever plan on watching Adventure Times? It's basically the closest American series to a shonen. Um, no, I, I tried watching an episode of it because like so many people recommended it, but like I just couldn't see myself watching episode after episode of that. I don't know. I feel like um, is an after the last Airbender closer to that. I'm probably not going to watch, like, a Cartoon Network show again at this point in my life. <sighs> Ahmed Boos says, I'm not a bleach stand, but it's the definition of subtextual and, po subtextual and poetic. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Uh, no, Bleach is kind of the opposite. I mean, it's, it's basically, um, <laughs> I, I'm not going to talk about Bleach. I'm not going to talk about Bleach. I'm not, not going to talk about Bleach. I think people are getting getting upset because, like, I'm putting Chainsaw Man on a pedestal or whatever. All I said is that it's the only one that is, out of any action, adventure, fantasy manga series that I've read, that exclusively uses literary devices to communicate its ideas. Exclusively. So, um, it is objectively a lot more subtle in terms of its writing than any other uh, manga in those categories I've read. And then, if you want to combine the themes that it's getting at, it does have a legitimately very interesting take a unique take on the hedonic treadmill. And anytime a series can actually put forward like a unique take on certain um, philosophies or ideas, I think that always puts it in a good category. I'd say the same thing like Hunter x Hunter and uh, Chimera and Dark, for example. <sighs> Am I going to watch Rick and Morty the anime? Uh... Oh, didn't this... See I actually... I stopped watching Rick and Morty for a while, and then for whatever reason, I watched a few episodes of this season. I liked a couple... Of, there was, like, a spaghetti episode that I thought was decent. There was... Um, 
there were some episodes I thought were good. There was that clip show episode that I thought was good. I think the season finale just came out. I'm going to, I'm going to read that. Um, yeah, or not read that, watch that as well. Zizi said thought, says thoughts on Oda Jump Festa statement. I was happy to read that because I can imagine how much Oda must have been putting time and um, worry. I get like just time and like for him, the, the One Piece live action, right, was something that he must have like um, been obsessing over and worried over for so long. Like that's a huge part of his legacy. Like he wanted that for a long time, um, being able to push One Piece to the West, right? in a big way, right? Not just some people knowing about it. So for him, that's a huge part of his legacy. So I'm just happy reading how much he cared about it and how much time and effort he put into it. And then him getting to see it blow up the way that it did, most likely surpassing his expectations by a good amount. So I was happy to see that. Like, that's always got to feel good. Like he's been working on this series for so long and he had one final window of sorts to 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 push it to this final extra level that he really always wanted it to get to, and he was able to get that. So I think that that's got to feel really, really satisfying, right? <clears throat> Anuj uh, says, comedy subtlety, uh, subtlety, which is really important in thematic writing. Des doesn't necessarily make it better, but it is an advantage. Yeah, you don't, like, subtlety is not always the answer. Like, sometimes, like, Berserk has a, has a speech by Griffith early on in the series, which is one of my favorite uh, favorite moments in the entire manga. And it's a very, 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 very spelled out um, monologue about the ideas that the story is getting at. But it's really well written. So it's fine that it's not subtle. It's, uh, uh, it, it can be really, really broken down for the reader and powerful because of the idea that it's communicating. At the same time, um, you don't always want to do that, right? So it's a mix of the two, right? Um, in general, shonen manga in particular will, will err towards spelling things out. One Piece, by the way, is very, very good with literary devices and not spelling things out at points. Sometimes it is very, very overt with it, but many times it's not. And one of the big reasons is because of the main character, Luffy who himself is not a very, very um, articulate individual, right? So Luffy's not often going to break down all of the ideas that Oda's getting across. He will make simple statements that you can then draw a lot of, uh, um, what do you call, uh, additional meaning out of when you connect it to the ideas of the arc and what other characters have been going through this arc or been talking about this arc. So... Uh, I like that quite a bit. It's one of the small things that kind of makes One Piece um, a little bit elevated writing-wise um, in terms of how it communicates to its ideas. <clears throat> oh, I know Anami's talking about when that character goes to that island and does that thing. Yeah, I don't know. Like, that stuff I'm not going to get too into because he hyped 2023 up in that same way, and I still don't know who that character or fighting that person was. <laughs> Tala says, Mord said Luffy being <laughs> retarded is actually a literary device. <laughs> no, it, do, it does help having, like, a tight-lipped character. I mean, it's, it's like, Denji's not a um, <laughs> an articulate character either, right? Um, you kind of just pick up from, like, the small aha moments that he has or the small statements that he makes or the actions that he takes, what the bigger ideas are. Ender says, post-time skip very much spells things out way more than pre-time skip lol. Um, yeah, I would agree. Um, I do think that thematic writing was better in One Piece pre-time skip. Uh, I think Egghead Island's theming so far has been strong, though. Um, I definitely think it's been strong. And I think a lot of the ideas are coming together in a way that I feel, I don't know, um, like, I feel like this arc in particular is managing to say a lot. I, we kind of got to wait for the end to see where everyone's little arcs and motivations and actions kind of come together. But I do think that, um, yeah, I do think that Egghead Island is a, one of the better 
arcs in one piece in terms of like writing in many facets, but also thematic writing as well. Uh, Virgil Hawkins, thanks for the 10. Based on your thoughts on Haikyuu, think, <laughs> think you should read Slam Dunk first, then Dragon Ball of sports manga, the Dragon Ball of sports manga inspired Haikyuu. Starts mostly as comedy and slowly gets more intense, but is focused on basketball. Dude, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not reading multiple sports manga. If I read one, it's gonna be Haikyuu first, and then, then move on. Yeah, I would agree with Eric mainly about Wano's theme, so I'm not going to talk about Wano's themes here. But I do think that Eric, or not Eric, uh, <laughs> mixing up the E's, Egghead uh, themes are good right now. I think that there's like several things coming together here. <sighs> Here's what sucks. I had a cold, come, like getting on my flight to Malaysia. And because you don't really sleep well or rest well on planes, at least I don't. I didn't really recover over the course of that. So now my voice is kind of gone. Isaiah says, did Morge just wake up? What the fuck? I am in Malaysia. So yes, I did wake up a couple hours ago because we were in different time zones. Yokai Gota says, damn, the themes around Luffy having the drums of liberation and freedom are trash. That's a crazy take, Walt. Uh, that's not what I'm referring to when I'm referring to Wano. Uh, Wano's themes. That's not what I'm referring to. <clears throat> and I've never said, I don't think I've ever said all of Wano's bad. I will always maintain I think Gear 5 is good. Um, Gear 5 is good. Uh, I think all, all of that stuff is good, personally. And not, not just good. Good is underselling it. Uh, like peak, like one of the highest peaks in the series. I could see it easily being some people's favorite moment in the series. One of the, like that, like the Gear 5 stuff is, um, like, it's going to go down, and, I don't know. Um, it, like, I don't know what, what, to, what to place it as or whatever, but uh, it's, it's clearly one of the best One Piece moments of all time. <clears throat> Talos says, San yeah, Sanji's also good, I think. Bad username says, do you think Gear 5 is going to get overused and boring? So far, I think I've always been enjoying Gear 5 action. Um, I think the real test for me, in my mind, with Gear 5 is going to be when it comes to how Oda approaches, like, Luffy versus Akainu. Because there's going to come a time that I want a different type of energy and tone. Something more similar to, like, you know, when Luffy's facing... Luchi, or when Luffy's facing, like, Crocodile in the third round or something. Something very, very serious, and Oda not breaking it for humor, right? Um, Gear 5 is difficult because every single move is supposed to be a gag. So, uh, yeah, let's see what happens when Luffy versus Akainu rolls around or something. Let's see. So Virgil Hawkins says, I found the resolution to a lot of the Sanji stuff underwhelming. <sighs> it's tricky because I like Sanji's conversation with Queen a lot. Um, I actually, I don't know. Um, I felt like that was the best character writing Sanji had ever gotten in a fight. I did think that the way that it resolved was a little weird because it was basically, like, I think the moment of Sanji breaking the thing, you know, breaking the... Um, the, sorry, I'm like a little, uh, <laughs> under the weather still breaking the, the raid, you know, the raid suit and everything like that. I thought that was good. Uh, but like really, really good. I just thought that like it fixed itself with no problems. Like there was never actually, I don't know, any consequences to anything. So it was a little weird. <clears throat> Sabo versus Kainu, I still don't think. I, I, I prefer Luffy versus Kainu always. <laughs> B 
bad unit username says, isn't it so crazy how everyone hyper wanted to be Zorzark, but Sanji ended up having more development lol. Sanji did have more development than Zoro for sure. I still don't feel like Zoro developed in any way in Wano that is new to his character personally. SJ Naka 101, thanks for the five. How do you think it would feel to be animated something that you know is going to be made obsolete while you're finishing your own version? Wait, that's actually kind of crazy. I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, how would the Toei animators feel about this? Because they know that down the line, like... And it's probably not even going to be that far off because I imagine the pacing of this is going to be much, much, much faster, right? The pacing of this new anime. So it's like within 10 years almost, like you could, you could imagine if you're animating something for Egghead Island, right? You could imagine that it's possible that in 10 years or something, there's another anime that will be doing the same thing, but probably better because budget, pace it, like, just what they're covering. I don't know. That's got to feel really, really weird. Yeah, I don't know. Eric says, we animators don't think like that. I mean, is that actually the case, though? Because, like, just for any, any adaptation, like, it's kind of like people working on the, like, uh, you know how the DC universe is being rebooted? The DC uh, cinematic universe is being rebooted? Like, it's got to feel so weird working on, like, uh, whatever was the, what's the newest thing? The Aquaman movie or something, when you know that none of this is going to matter and it's just all going to be replaced with a new uh, DC universe in, like, five years or something like that. I don't know. It's, it's got to feel weird. Corey Sion says, you're looking rough. Are you okay? Um... I'm pretty jet lagged, so I'm pretty tired and I have a cold. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's just the way it is. Thanks for asking. Um, Sampat Sakesh Revolpathy, thanks for being a Yonko tier member for 13 months. Yo, Morge, long time. Really excited for the reboot. I hope they go all the way. How connected do you want it to be? I don't want to reuse any assets. Um, initially, I was like, I didn't get much time to think about this because I've all, like, um, uh, like, I haven't really looked into anything just yet. I I initially felt like I wanted them to be able to somehow use the old voice actor recordings, because I just like the voice cast so much. I wanted them to be able to use the old voice cast recordings, but then at the same time, and the OST, but at the same time, the more I think about it, that just can't work, right? Because the way that they pace the lines probably won't necessarily line up with the pacing of the new anime. So... I guess they're not going to reuse any of the old assets. Maybe music? I don't know if they would do music. Eric says, what you make is what you make. It's still ours. It's not like it's being replaced. Uh, but it is, I, I get that. But ultimately, you're creating things for people, right? And at the end of the day, people are not going to view that adaptation that you're making as the definitive adaptation, most likely. You're now making... You just got demoted, essentially, for making the the One Piece anime to um, the uh, the lesser version of the One Piece anime. There's going to be a separate anime that is going to be the one that most people are going to ultimately be watching and recommending, and that's the one that's going to have... It's probably going to take over legacy-wise. Um, I mean, we kind of saw it. We've seen it happen so many times already. Like, compare Hunter x Hunter, the first one that came out, to the new Hunter x Hunter, right? First one was liked when it, came, when it was out, but... Nobody used that, used that as the definitive version of Hunter x Hunter anymore. The newer version of Hunter x Hunter, um, the new version of the anime, has essentially replaced that. That's what people kind of hold up now. Um, the other one is kind of, its legacy basically goes down over time because of the existence of the new one. Same thing with, like, you guys know there was an old version of JoJo's Bizarre Adventures? Um, there was an old version of it. Nobody watches it now. It got all the way to Stardust Crusaders, but there's no point. There's a better version out. Um, and Achagra says, more. you're never retiring new One Piece content for 20 years. Um, <laughs> it is a lot more content, uh, obviously, but uh, I'm, I'm cover I covered the manga. That's, at the end of the day, I always cover the manga. So when the manga ends, I end. Uh, I end this stuff. 
Japanese Jim, thanks for the five. Excited for the remake because of the countless moments that lost their punch post time skip because of the dog shit pacing, especially the humor. Yeah, I hope they can get the humor back on track because now they kind of got to take one. I think that in the manga itself, pre time skip had better comedy moments and comedy scenes. I think just more time was devoted to that. I think there's fewer periods of time in the post time skip where we just get extended sequences that are purely comedy in the manga. But that's not the main reason. In post time skip, um, because the pacing is so much slower, jokes like comedy is mostly about timing, right? Most people tell you that comedy is largely about timing. Not exclusively, but a lot of people will say that comedy timing is a huge part of it. But the anime has to drag out moments to fill up pacing, right? To fill up, to fill out this, the, the pace of an episode. So the anime will take something that's a quick joke, works better as a fast joke, and then stretch it to be like a really long drawn out joke and maybe the joke is not that funny in the first place it, it works as like a very quick thing like a throwaway gag then suddenly it takes over like 30 seconds when it should be two seconds you know so yeah um i don't know the, like the only thing that i can say about this this uh new one piece anime that's coming out is i uh i wish that there was a way that it could <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of just like, the only thing I'm bummed about, and it's not even like, it's, it's not even an actual thing to be upset about. It's just like, it's going to take so long to get to the parts that I want to see animated. You know, I'm not going to be sitting through and watching East Blue again, most likely. I probably won't even do for Alabasta, maybe for any Lobby, I don't know. Um, but I'm probably not going to watch, I'll tune in to watch some episodes or something. Maybe I'll do an, a reaction or something to some of the episodes. Um, but I'm really not going to sit down and probably watch full seasons of this until it gets to the parts that I've really always wanted to see animated in a way that I could actually watch, like actually binge as an anime fan. So post time skip. So I don't know timeline wise, what's realistic, how long it would take them to, to animate all the way up to the guy have no gauge on this sort of thing, how long it would take for them to animate all the way up to. Marine Ford, Post Time Skip, Fishman Island, stuff like that. But uh, <laughs> Slick Sixes will probably be at Wano by like 2035 plus. You guys think? What do you guys think is a realistic pace of animation for this? What's what's believable? What what could they do? Deshaun Comedy, thanks for the two. Watch Eminence in Shadow. Most fun anime I've seen. Thank you for the recommendation. Can anybody else back up this recommendation? Anybody? I need some more... Uh, I need multiple people, multiple people to tell me that this is good. Himil says One Piece with good pacing. Yeah, One Piece with good pacing is basically like the best anime ever, right? Chris Morales says Skype says Skype yeah, would be dope with better pacing. Um, hmm. I mean Skype yeah, even in the manga, it's it's a slow going arc. It's not a super exciting arc for most of it. Again, a lot of us have more nostalgia for Skype yeah now because we have better context. Um. But the arc itself is not the most exciting arc. I, I think the highlights are towards the end part of it, really. Is 100 chapters per year realistic? Someone's saying Eminence in Shadow is fun, dumb but fun. <laughs> Kate's kind of fan service. Ender is saying Morge won't like Eminence in Shadow. Okay, I'm not going to try it. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to try it. I'm sorry, man. I appreciate the recommendation, though. Um, yeah, what's a reasonable, reasonable rate? 100 chapters per year? 100 chapters per year, in my mind, that's like the dream rate. I, I don't imagine that being actually feasible, right? And if we had 100 chapters per year, if we magically could do that, then it's still 10 years before I can finally watch, like, something like Wano, Hoke Island with good pacing. L, thanks for the yawn, but you remember for 10 months. Toei Animator is punching the, <laughs> punching the air right now as we speak. <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, I mean, I, it, it will have to feel weird that, like, they just got relegated to the <laughs> the backup. Like, you, you kind of just got demoted, basically. Like, you're making the, the backup One Piece adaptation now, or the outdated One Piece adaptation in real time. It's weird. <clears throat> Sanji says, Morge with 200k subs and still live streaming like he's at one viewer. I am in Malaysia. I am in a foreign country. The Wi-Fi here in this apartment is not ideal. It's also be being split up with the, less, the rest of my family. Um, I'm doing the best that I possibly can. This is just the way, 
<laughs> this is just the way it's got to be. Um, 100 chapters every one to two years is realistic. Yeah, I could see one to two years, but like 100 per year would be the dream. Because we could fly through the series, kind of. Not even, no, we can't fly through the series. You know what? At the end of the day, uh, if, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to think, like, when will I get to actually sit down and one day binge all of One Piece? Like, in the anime. In the manga, I'll be able to do that in five years, probably. I would I would bet. The manga, it's going to be another 15 to 20. Holy shit. Yeah, I'll be, like, in my 40s before I can watch all of One Piece. That's crazy. Rafi the Goat says, do you think it's a good time to start the remake? I, this is so, like, this is, a, I mean, this, this feels surreal because it just doesn't make sense to me that this could be happening already. I always felt like the One Piece anime itself would end, right? Um, I felt like first the One Piece manga ends, then the One Piece anime, I feel like they're going to try and drag out the ending as much as possible, like, kind of really keep milking the cash as much as possible, kind of like Naruto did. So, like, give it another five, ten years before the One Piece anime ends. Then there'd be a gap of some years after that. And then finally the One Piece, like Toei would start remaking the One Piece anime as like a One Piece Kai. And then that would take like another 15 years to produce or so, like 15, 20 or something. And I always felt like that is the ideal dream version. This is so, so much better. Like they're not even going to wait for the One Piece anime to finish. They're just going to jump in now and start fixing it now. Um, do I think it's a good time for the One Piece anime to, to start? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if they could have done it five years ago, that would have been great. Like, you know, but, uh, the fact that they're not waiting for the end of the anime in itself, that's so much better than I could have asked for. I didn't even think that was a possibility, you know? <clears throat> Yeah, this kind of, like, means that, like, Curtis Jackson says, One Piece fans, we're going to be eating for a long while. On Like, you know what's really cool about this? So, you know, Dragon Ball ended, Dragon Ball Z ended, and then the author kept on going to make, kept on, like, making new things, right? And then they produced Dragon Ball Super and, like, all this other stuff. And then Naruto ended, and then they got movies coming out, and then Boruto and the spin-off stuff and all that stuff. One Piece is written to conclude, like, it's a giant story, but it's written to conclude, um... At, at a certain point, and it feels like Oda's not going to stray from that, and once that happens, like, everything's going to end, I don't think, like, I think Oda's made it clear he's not going to do any more One Piece work afterwards, but what's so cool is that it seems like it's going to have a huge legacy even after the series ends, just because of the, um, like, without the author having, like, without having to fuck with the story, or, like, four spin-offs or sequels or anything like that, but just because of the, um, the, the sheer scale of what was created in the story, um, so much more can be... It seems like we're going to have so much more building off of it going forward with the live-action uh, adaptation continuing for years onwards, with this new anime taking off um, and probably most likely being very successful for, like, decades onwards. Um, I think it's just really cool that, like, One Piece can come to a close and even then the series can still continue to grow its legacy over time and maybe become even more popular post its uh, climax, post its conclusion, than it is even right now, if that makes sense. Like, imagine 10 years from now, the One Piece manga is over, but we're living in a world where the Netflix adaptation is the most popular show in the world or something. The One Piece anime is the most popular anime um, that's viewed by lots of people, like the new One Piece anime. Right? That's very, very po possible that... Like, the series keeps growing its, uh, you know, its status or sort of its... Like, th there continues to be more content for us to keep being able to delve into, right? We get to keep watching new episodes of the live action. We get to keep re-watching um, the series, but in a new ad anime adaptation form with the new anime. Like, we'll have a lot to work with once the story itself closes. And I think without having to fuck with the story or force sequels or spinoffs or anything. And I think that's really, really cool. <clears throat> JB says, looking forward to Zoe not being 22 episodes. Yeah. <laughs> Talking Taco says, we definitely going to get spinoffs, just not done by Oda. I mean, I don't think we'll get canon spinoffs. I personally don't think, you know, not like Boruto or uh, Super. 
Red Hawks is I don't think I've heard of a story having two animes going at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I personally haven't either. Sleeping Dangerous is acting like One Piece won't get anything after the manga ends is delusional. I don't think that Oda is going to greenlight stuff that that is additional to the story. Like, cannot, like I don't think he's going to greenlight Two Piece, you know? I don't think that he's going to do that. I also just don't think that One Piece lends itself to that because... Like, Dragon Ball, it's easy to green light more stuff because you just make up new shit. There, there was never really a clear direction that the narrative was building to. Naruto, even then, like, a lot of it is just um, the lore kind of came together as the story came on, but it was never really very planned out story. Like, the <laughs> Hishimoto didn't even fucking know... He didn't have Sasuke plan when he first started the story. He didn't have, like, Itachi plan when he first... Like, he made up a lot of shit as it went on, and then eventually the narrative kind of came together. That's why you can create a spinoff like Boruto. One Piece... Everything is drift is written, like the entire world, like every facet of the world and every character, it's written in a sort of converging uh, narrative structure where it's all coming towards singularity. Like all of the things have to connect in one single point for the climax. Right? Every piece of lore, every running history, every island story, all of it's running towards one thing. So it's really hard to organically create something after um, the battle for the dawn of the world is won. The only way to really do it is basically reach into space and pull random bullshit out. That's the only way to do it. <clears throat> and I think Oda's already said that if he... Um, <clears throat> I think Oda's already said that if that once the series finishes, he would not write more One Piece. He would write like a... I forget. He said a robot manga or something like that if he, if he could. Um, so he himself is not interested in adding more content to One Piece. You know? <clears throat> Plyush says, I mean, getting a prequel is a possibility. Yeah, I guess during Roger's era and stuff like that, that could make sense. But I don't think Oda would do it. Like, Oda himself is not adding more to the story of One Piece as far as we, as far as he's hinted at. Um, would he greenlight some other author to just do it? Like, um, like Kishimoto did? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, side stories, I guess what I'm saying is, like, not continuing it on, like, Dragon Ball Super or Boruto or something. I don't think One Piece really has room for that. Like, I don't think we're reading, the, we're going to read the story of the next Pirate King, because I don't know if that's going to be a thing, or the next Joy Boy. So, I guess minor spinoffs I could see being a thing. I shouldn't have said that. As you say, the as Chris Morales says, the Ace and Law novels are canon. Yeah. Um, I guess I meant, like, we're not going to see, like, a Boruto or a Dragon Ball Super or something. Or, like, some successor to Luffy storyline or something. Star Alicia. Yeah, this is the thing I would be most scared of, which is, um, just giving story points to another artist and letting them take over. Because they're not going to write anywhere near as well, and they're just going to butcher the story. I mean, there's some stuff that's already kind of questionable that's in the series, like Uta. A Roger story would be amazing. Yeah, I mean, but I think we're going to get God Valley, and it seems like God Valley was the most exciting Roger story as is. <laughs> I, I think Luffy would be a deadbeat. I think Luffy's not equipped. I think Luffy being a deadbeat would be good because Luffy's not equipped to be a father. So, like, it would be more damaging for him to be around and fucking the kid up than, uh, than just having him be off somewhere else. You know what I mean? Like, look at, um, like, Goku and Gohan. Goku isn't around for, like, most of Gohan's life, I feel. And Gohan grows up great, you know? Um, much better than if Goku was constantly a presence in his life. <laughs> Who 
Luffy's gonna marry Wanda. I've never heard that before. Eric wants to see old man Zoro. I mean, I'd love to see like an epilogue and just get a glimpse of what they're they're up to in their old age. Sleeping Danger says Luffy isn't good at every at anything except fighting. Yeah, exactly. Oh shit, I forgot about the Hunter Hunter ending. The Hunter Hunter ending, because for those of you who don't know, the Hunter Hunter author um, told us what of the endings of Hunter Hunter. Like, this was a scrapped ending of Hunter Hunter, just in case he never got to the, the ending that he wanted to do. The ending, I, I was a little disappointed, not because of what the ending was, but because it wasn't really an ending. He just told us, like, an, a little epilogue scene. Like, that's not what an ending is. For those of you who don't know, it was just, like, talking about, I forget, Gon's granddaughter or daughter or some shit. Uh, I forget exactly. Um, just, like, how she doesn't want to be a hunter or something. Some, some stupid thing. Um... But it's just it's just random. Like it, it just confirms for us that I think Gon didn't die, doesn't die or anything like that in the end, and he seems to be successful in some capacities. But we don't actually like it's not an ending to the plot of the story. It tells us nothing about the actual. It's just an epilogue scene. That's not what an ending is. I hope that his other three endings are more planned out than just like <laughs> cutting back to Gon's home island and showing like does he have a kid or not. Like that's not what an ending is. It's like. What happens with the narratives of the story? Like, what happens with the character storylines, uh, the plot the plot that was built up? How do, how do things conclude, right? This is not, that's not, I, I, that was the thing that bothered me the most about this ending. It wasn't, like, it wasn't, it was just the lack of information. And it also makes me concerned that he doesn't actually have three other endings planned out. He just has three other epilogue scenes planned out. Manny, thanks for the five. Hey, Morge, I saw Godzilla minus one because of your recommendation. I thought it was great. Was the part you disliked the hospital scene? Ooh, uh, we should... I guess that's not as... Yes, that was the scene that I... That I... Dis... Yeah. Uh, without... Yeah, the final scene of the movie is the one that I disliked. Um, and it's the only moment that I dislike. But it, it, it did bother me a lot. But besides that, I, I really, really... Um, not, not even liked it. I loved it, but yeah, that, that scene, I think really hurt the movie for me, but I think I liked the rest of the movie so much that now I've kind of let the, the final scene slide a little bit in my mind. So I just ignore it. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying the, the final scene is the one that I didn't like. That's it. I haven't seen Shin Godzilla. <sighs> yeah, it's not, like Manny says, it's not a spoiler. It's, it's just, I, I've been saying it's the last little section of the movie that I didn't like. I'm not saying anything that happens there. <clears throat> Shyam M says Morge what is the movie of the year uh, I don't think I've watched that many movies this year um, all I know is I like Godzilla Minus One more than like Oppenheimer I mean it's I really fucking like this movie a lot T.Y. says have you seen the original Godzilla no I've not I'm probably going to watch uh, The Boy and the Heron with my family while I'm here. So I'll let you guys know how that goes. Um, I've heard it's a much more abstract style than previous Miyazaki movies. <clears throat> Piyush says, who's going to be your MVP for this season? I don't think I've watched enough NBA to confidently say. Um... It's one of those things where it's like, I feel like 
you can't go wrong with like like Jokic is always an option. I haven't really checked the Nuggets standings right lately. I know Embiid seems like a good pick. Isn't Giannis doing really well right now too? Um I know Luka's doing phenomenal. It's just that there's so many players putting up crazy stat lines right now. Like, the stat lines are just absurd nowadays. Like, my whole sense of of what makes sense is just evaporated. Like, it just doesn't... Like, every day, it's some surreal stat line. Like, nothing means anything to me anymore. Because um, just the numbers have gotten so crazy. So... Like, I used to understand what 30 points mean. Like, a 30-point triple-double used to mean something really specific. Like, I had a concrete idea in my head of what it means eight years ago, right? Like, uh, more like in 2016, 2017, I had a concrete idea of what a 30-point triple-double means. I was, like, it, it's just something super impressive. Now it's just, like, every other day, someone's doing something similar to that. Um, it's just gotten too absurd. <sighs> I think Luca winning MVP would be cool because I feel like he just he should get an MVP at some point, but I just don't know if he objectively has the best case for it because so many people have such like it, it's just so hard to put into perspective. I'm trying to compare like what is this actually like if I like how good is this player actually like it's just so hard to say because I know LeBron is nowhere near as good as he was one was before, but his stats are like <laughs> as good or better, and it's just skewing everything. Anyway, it's not just defense is lesser value. It's like pace went up because of shot clock, um, like the shot clock change that they did re- recently. So the pace has gone up higher and higher. Teams just push the pace more so people get more possessions. And then um, offenses have gotten much, 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 much better at getting players better and better and better looks like for more and more efficient um more and more efficient scoring, especially for their star players. That's something that KD talked about on a podcast. Like, he kind of broke it down. So, like, a lot of it is just, like, um, just making things easy. Like, offensive schemes making things easier for their star players to be able to, to rack up points and stuff like that. Anyway, Pat Galley, thanks for the two. Steph Curry lost his 238 game three-pointer streak. Yeah, I did see that. Um, I feel bad for Steph because he's stuck on the Warriors with, like, a bunch of shitty teammates and like he's still in a at a level of play where he can be very much a championship threat but I don't know man like I kind of just written him and the Warriors off for the for the season Kingdoms is 30 points is the new 10 points for a superstar <laughs> I don't know Umir Ulas is what shot clock change so before if I recall correctly if you took a shot um you missed shot clock would, but you got the rebound. Shot clock would reset uh, would reset to the full amount of time, but then they changed it so that if you missed, got a rebound, now the shot clock resets to I think like fourteen seconds or something shorter, which increases the pace of play because it forces more possessions. It's kind of uh, it's it's like small stuff like that. Like there's there's not one singular thing that changed scoring and. Um, the change scoring and made it so stats go up. It's a lot of small things adding up together and all kind of coinciding. So one, the newfound emphasis on three-point play right after 2016. Um, Two, defensive rules changing. Three, pace of play immediately kind of going up with the shot clock change, um, which in itself is minor, but it's stacking on everything else. Four, teams realizing the importance of analytics more, which means that they change offensive schemes to only get efficient looks as much as possible, which makes it so that um, star players are are getting plays called and things set up and give, being given the ball in positions that are as efficient as possible, stuff like that. <clears throat> All right, guys. I'm probably going to call stream in like 5, 10 minutes, so... Yeah, um, I'm going to be streaming in this quality again when the chapter comes out, so look out for that. KJX says, how was your day, Morge? My day just started. Uh, for me, it is like, what, 11.30 a.m. right now? Yeah, and I started the stream about two hours ago. Um, yeah, because uh, different time zone at the moment. So, 
in my day, I haven't really done anything so far. Beanie Head says, do you think it's weird that we know almost nothing about history of One Piece after the Void Century? I think that's kind of the point. I think once we understand more so what happened in the Void Century, we will start to understand why. Like, because they talk about the Void Century, but from uh, for us, the reader, we really don't know that much about, like, not just 800 years ago. We don't know much about, like, 600 years ago, 400 years ago, 500 years ago. Like, we only really know a lot of the history that happened from the Rocks era to now. But maybe we'll get an explanation once we learn more about the Void Century itself. <clears throat> Ultimate Simon says, not gonna lie, we could get so many light novels slash side story on random crews. Imagine a mini Tama story. <laughs> yeah, we all want a, a Tama story, that's for sure. That's what I'm really crossing my fingers for. More, <laughs> Tal is asking, do you think in the One Piece anime will finally get the Zoro arc? I think Wano's going to be pretty much the same. I don't think we're getting a Zoro arc. Yeah, we do know Nolan's time a little bit. That's true, right? Drifty sauce implying that it's a flat earth. It's very possible. <clears throat> Thoughts on monster adaptations to Sleeping Danger? Uh, I watched an episode or two of Monster. I forget how how far. Um, I figured I'd always just like try and read that as a manga if I ever really wanted to get into it. I've heard mixed things about the ending though um, from someone that I trust. So I don't want to get into something if the ending is just not satisfying. Jay Moon is asking, wait, how do I become a member on mobile at Mr. Moj? I feel like there should be a button underneath the stream. Um, thank you for asking. Uh, if you want to try, I think that there should be a button underneath the stream. Uh, I'm not sure. But yeah, if you go to the, the stream, maybe if you flip your phone this way, uh, vertical, maybe there's a button underneath. I'm sorry, I don't know the exact answer. Oh, the Oda one shot. Oh yeah, I forgot, we're getting another thing. Yeah, we're getting the, the monster. Yeah, 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 I'm excited for that. I'm definitely excited for that. Cause um, again, if you guys have time, read um, Oda's one shots that he made before One Piece. They're all, I think, I think it's called Wanted. I keep forgetting. I think it's called Wanted. Um, yeah, it's a series of one shots that he made. And it's like Oda, it's it's all classic Oda style. And you can see, oh, Jay Munt, thank you for, jo thanks for joining. Thanks for joining the Yonko tier member. For those of you who are Yonko tier, you will still be getting your podcast this week. Just wait for Friday. Um, I will still record it here, of course. Don't worry about that. Uh, I appreciate it, man. Um, as for, yeah, like the, the series of one shots that he did, I think there was only one that I kind of didn't care for and I didn't think was that good, but there's several that are really funny. Um, there's one where he's like a gunsling, where he writes about a gunslinger. I thought that one was like decent. There's one that I really love, which is like, um, a guy who gets like God's notebook or something like that. And that one's peak Oda comedy. It's one of the funniest things he's ever written. And I don't know if it would work as a full series, but it's great. Um, there's some early versions of One Piece that you can see. Um, and I think the best, there's probably two more that I'm forgetting, but the best one I still think uh, to this day is probably Monsters. Or Monsters, sorry. Monsters is like a really, really good one shot. It's a compelling one shot for sure. Um, it's, I forget exactly if it's canon to the One Piece universe or, or like the One Piece universe has like an alternate version of it in its lore or something like that, but it's really, really good. Um, it's really good. Manny says, let's get the likes to 300. I would have asked more about the likes if I could see the likes. I can't even see the likes right now because um, with the Wi-Fi the way it is, the only thing I can do is pull up chat. I can only pull up stream chat. That's the extent of my, um, uh, of what the, the Wi-Fi in the spot I'm at right now can handle. 
So I don't. I haven't been asking about likes here. Jmon says, been lurking for two-ish years watching every VOD. Oh, nice. Thank you, man. I was the dude who commented on Patreon that you posted the wrong audio on 420 when you did the high podcast element. <laughs> it wasn't... A, oh, no, it was a high... I forget exactly, man. But I did post the wrong audio, funnily enough, that day. So thanks, man. I appreciate that. That that helped a lot of people out. All right, guys. Um, yeah, the rhyme... But I've heard some people say... So the this... The anime Monsters will feature the character Ryuma. But I've heard some people say that the one that's in the version of Monsters is not the one that's canon to the One Piece universe. It's just inspired. Um, like the same idea. It's just inspired. So we're supposed to take it that there's a similar character from that universe in this one. I don't know. Um, I'll need to look that up later what people will have to say about it. But yeah. It hit 300 likes. That's good to know. Thank you. Without without me even asking. So that's really, really nice of you guys. I appreciate it. Um, I am going to have to call stream... Uh, right around here. Uh, just I, I need some rest, man. I've been sick, been jet lagged. Uh, I need some rest, and it is genuinely difficult to keep the stream going with uh, the internet this way. But I will be covering the next chapter when it comes out. I think we got a chapter this week, right? We got a chapter this week. Someone tell me we got a chapter. We have a chapter this week, right? Chris Morales says, "Have you gotten into 20th Century Boys? I feel like it's exactly like something you would like." I've heard really good things, but I've also heard that the ending is questionable there. So I don't know. I don't know. All says, did Morge just wake up? I am in Malaysia. I'm in a, I'm in a foreign country. It is okay. I woke up two, like I woke up several hours ago, actually. It's okay. It is fine. For, it is morning for me right now. It is morning for me right now. All right, guys. Um, yeah. All right. <laughs> Paul Mar- Martin says, I just arrived. Come on. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> sorry. Um, all right, guys. I'm going to call it here. Um, Thanks for tuning in. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys later.